Greetings fellow humans, my name is Alistair Lord and I am the Renaissance Yorkshireman. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about creative visualisations and creative visualisations are one particular form of meditation and creative visualisations are often associated now with manifestation. Now what is manifestation? If you've watched the video The Secret, you might have this woo-woo idea of manifestation. So that if I picture a block of gold in my mind, I will make it appear on the table as if by magic. Well, it doesn't work like that. Now, it can help you to manifest things in your life, such as a new job or a different lifestyle, a different way of living, but it's only one part of that. You have to take some kind of action. These things don't manifest by magic. They manifest because you're using uh, creative visualization techniques and then you're taking some kind of action to, to, to bring those things into being. It's not woo-woo nonsense. It's a way of bringing things into the world. So for example, with my book, The Tower of Sustainable Development, A New Post-Capitalist Paradigm, before that was a finished product, I had a picture in my mind. I had a feeling about what I wanted to do and I had a story. And I used this creative visualization and then I took action. I started writing the book and after seven years, hey ho, it's a real thing in the world. So I manifested this into being, but unlike Harry Potter, I didn't use magic. I used creative visualizations and hard work. Before I get into the nitty gritty of creative visualizations, I'd first like to talk a little bit about my sources. So on YouTube, I recommend Dandapani. He's a Hindu monk and he sometimes talks about using visualizations and some of his videos are extremely good. I, I recommend them. Uh, another person I would recommend is Neville Goddard. And Neville Goddard in many respects is kind of like the godfather of manifestation. In the 1950s, Neville Goddard was one of the first people who talked about some of these techniques and changing the world through, through kind of visualizations. And not only are there a lot of recordings of him speaking, but there's also a lot of YouTubers out there making uh, videos about some of the techniques that he talks about. So for example, he talks about a technique called state akin to sleep, SAT, which is kind of a form of creative visualization although different from what I'm going to explain today. I also recommend this book, which is Creative Visualization, Use the Power of Your Imagination to Create What You Want in Your Life. And it's by an American author who calls herself Shakti Gawain. And that is a, uh, and that this, this is a book that I found very helpful with my own creative visualizations. So those are my sources. Now, the second thing that I want to talk about before I get into the nitty gritty is a little bit about posture. Now, with creative visualizations, you can do them lying down or you can do them sitting. Now, there are some types of visualization that I prefer to do lying down. There are some types that I prefer to do sitting. The important thing is that you have an unimpeded airway. When I've been with meditation teachers, what they've often said for sitting meditation is if you picture a string or a rope with balls going through it and you hold it and, and, and the balls will hang straight down in a row and your spine should be like that so that the air goes in, the air goes out. If your spine is bent, you're going to have an impeded airway and you're not going to be able to breathe properly. So. If you're sitting down, make sure your back is straight and you can breathe easily. If you're lying down, again, make sure that you can breathe easily. But whichever posture you choose, being able to breathe in an unimpeded way is very important. What is creative visualization? Well, the name is slightly misleading because 
there's actually three different aspects and only one of them is about visualization. So what are these three aspects? Well, the first one is visualization, the second one is narrative, and the third one is feeling. Let's do a little exercise about visualizations. So what I want you to do is close your eyes. Do you have your eyes closed? Okay, now, with your eyes closed, I want you to picture in your mind's eye an apple. Look at the apple in your mind's eye. What colour is it? Is it all the same colour? Is it a fresh apple or is it going off? Can you rotate this apple in your mind so you can look at it from different angles? Now, I want you to leave the image of the apple, but keep your eyes closed. Now I want you to picture someone you love. Could be your father or mother. Could be your sister or brother. Could be your son or daughter. Could be your husband or wife boyfriend or girlfriend, or just a friend, doesn't really matter. Picture someone you love. Picture their face in front of you. Now, zoom out slightly so you can picture them standing in front of you. So you're not just seeing their face, you're seeing their whole body. Remember, you've still got your eyes closed, you're using your mind's eye to picture them. and now you can open your eyes. Now, what I'm willing to bet is that some of you found picturing quite difficult. You could kind of do it, but it didn't come very naturally. Whereas others of you, you will have found it quite easy. Now, some people naturally have a better ability to visualize than others, but it's a skill, and like any skill, if you put in the practice, you will develop that skill. It's that simple. Uh, if you've ever studied a language, you don't learn it in two weeks, unless you've got an amazing memory. Um, you normally learn it over an extended period of time, but you do it through practice and repetition. And this is no different from learning a language or learning to drive a car. It's about practice and it's about repetition. Something else that I'm willing to bet is that when you were picturing the apple, you probably didn't have any kind of emotional charge. However, when you were picturing that person, you probably spontaneously felt some kind of emotion. So there was automatically a feeling aspect when I asked you to picture someone that you love, which wasn't there when I asked you to picture an apple. And this is quite common, and we'll, we'll talk about feeling in a minute. So that's visualization. You have your eyes closed and you're picturing something in your mind's eye. So the second part is the narrative. And in the narrative, you can either repeat an affirmation, you can repeat a mantra, or you can tell yourself a story. So, with, a, with an affirmation, uh, the classic one that, that, that's given in, uh, in a lot of uh, works on affirmation is, in every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. So, this has the virtue of being quite simple. It's easy to remember. There's two rules that you need to remember with affirmations, if you're going to make them yourself. One is, use a present tense. So normally, you're gonna be using the present simple. So, I am very healthy. I am strong and healthy. I have a rewarding job, which I love. I have, I am, blah, blah, blah. Now, sometimes you might use continuous. I am, I am enjoying my life. For example, could be possible, but in general, we'd use the present simple. But don't use a future tense. Don't say, 
I will be healthy or I'm going to be healthy because the subconscious mind doesn't understand time in the same way that the conscious mind does. And one of the things we're doing with, with, the, with uh, creative visualization, particularly with the narrative aspect, is to reprogram our subconscious, or if you like, we're trying to use a form of self-hypnosis for reprogramming our, our subconscious. So the first rule is use the present tense. The second rule is keep it positive. So for example, if you're a smoker and you want to stop smoking, you wouldn't use the affirmation, I will be a non-smoker. So this has got two problems. One, it's in the future, I will be. And two, it's non-smoker. So you're using a negative. So what you might do is use an affirmation like, I am extremely healthy or I am strong and healthy. Now, if you're a smoker and you want to stop smoking, one of the reasons is probably because you view smoking as unhealthy and you view not smoking as healthy. So your subconscious mind already understands this. You don't need to explain to your subconscious mind. So I am strong and healthy will be understood by your subconscious mind and it will start to reprogram you. So that's an example of an affirmation. Now you could use a mantra. Now a mantra is very similar to an affirmation, but they come from different Indian languages. So Hindi, or in the case of Buddhism, Pali. So for example, a mantra that I sometimes use is Shiva Shakti. And in the Hindu tradition, Shiva is the masculine aspect and Shakti is the feminine aspect. So there's a thing here about balancing your inner masculine and feminine, uh, which is important for a lot of people uh, for all sorts of reasons. Um, but the thing about the mantra being in a different language is it's got a particular power to it because people in India, Hindus, have been using these mantras for thousands of years. And because they've been used for thousands of years by thousands or perhaps millions or perhaps tens of millions or hundreds of millions of people, they have a particular power to them. Now, it doesn't matter that Hindi or Pali is not your first language. It only matters that you understand what it means and you recognize that it has a power because it's been used by so many people in that particular tradition. Now, if you're a Muslim or a Christian or something, you might have a problem with that. Well, you know, please yourself, you don't need to use them. You can use a mantra in English. Uh, sorry, you can use an affirmation that you make up yourself in English. So a common affirmation that I use in English which is related to meta meditation, which is spelled M-E-T-T-A, and meta normally translates as loving kindness. And I'll talk about this more in, in more detail in a future video. It goes like this, it's a four line affirmation. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be well. May I be peaceful and at ease. May I be happy. And you would repeat this in your mind. Um, now, the, the, the beauty of this is it's positive and it's nice and simple. It's easy to remember. Longer versions are available, but I prefer the short ones because they're easy to remember. So your narrative might be just something that you're repeating over and over again. It could be a story that you've made for yourself about the new life that you're trying to manifest. Or, or the thing that you're trying to manifest in your life. So you might be telling yourself a story. Doesn't really matter, but the visualization element and the narrative element are quite different. You might be using both of them. You might only be using one. It depends on the particular visualization that you're doing. So finally, there's a feeling aspect. So the feeling you want to generate some kind of positive emotion. So love, satisfaction, 
completion, um, accomplishment. And you can draw on your life for this. So if you're doing a meta meditation, and as I say, I'll talk about this more de in more detail in a future meditation, you might be, you're, you're generating a feeling of, 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 of self-love. And I mean this in a non-narcissistic way. Um, so you, you're trying to generate self-love. Um, so you're feeling love coming into you. Now, presumably, you felt love at some point in your life. Now, hopefully, you had a positive upbringing and you got love and affection from your parents, in which case you can imagine this. Or if you're a Christian or a Muslim you, or, or a Jew, you can imagine love coming in from God. Or if you've been in a relationship in the past, or you're in a relationship now that's very positive and you, you've had that honeymoon period where it's great sex and you get on and everything's lovely, then, then you can remember that feeling. But the, the important thing is, is you're not remembering it as a past event. You're remembering it so that you can feel it in this moment, in the moment when, when you're doing the creative visualization. So there's three aspects. There's the visualization, there's the narrative, and there's the feeling. Now, with some kinds of visualization, you'll only be using one of those. In others, you'll be using all three. So for example, you might be trying to manifest a particular job in your life. You, perhaps you're unemployed, you want a particular job, and you're gonna try and manifest this in your life. So what you might do is something along the lines of you have some kind of visualization where you're dressed in your work clothes. So if you're visualizing a job as a car mechanic, then obviously you're gonna be wearing some kind of overalls. If you're visualizing a job where you're in an office, you're probably gonna be wearing a shirt or tie if you're a man or, or a, 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 a woman's suit, whatever. Picture yourself in the clothes that you'll be wearing in that job Picture yourself in the place that you would be doing that job. You might picture yourself having some kind of interaction with colleagues. You might picture yourself doing the job. Experiment with it, play around with it. With the narrative, you might, be, you might keep it nice and short. You might tell yourself something like, um, I am a teacher, I am a mechanic. I am a multi-millionaire, I am a successful writer, I am a successful podcaster, something like that. Um, you, 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 you might have some other narrative, you might be telling yourself the story of what you do in your job, so it might be longer and more complex. And then you have the feeling, the feeling of satisfaction that you've accomplished this thing in your life. And it might be that you start with 20 or 30 seconds of visualization, then you might move on to 20 or 30 seconds of, of uh, repetition of, of affirmations, and then it might be 20 or 30 seconds of feeling. Or you might kind of be trying to do them at the same time. Experiment with it. You need to try it yourself. It's probably good to plan it out beforehand and then go with that plan. Now, things might spontaneously happen while you're doing it. Go with it if, if that happens. I find that it's often good to have half a plan and then kind of go with it. And as I say, sometimes you'll start with the visualization, go on to the narrative, go on to the feeling, back to the visualization, visualization, narrative, feeling, visualization, narrative, feeling, visualization, narrative, feeling. Or you might do five minutes of visualization, five minutes of narrative, five minutes of feeling, finished. Or you're doing them all at the same time. It's up to you. Experiment with it, see what works for you. And finally, with that example of the job, you would also have to take some kind of positive action in the real world. Real world. <laughs> to look at what's going on in the world. Um, something along the lines of sending out job applications or delivering your CV to places which you think want a, a, a looking for people. 
um, talking to people who you know in the industry, getting on LinkedIn, um, networking, applying for jobs, but you need to take some kind of positive action in the real world in addition to doing these visualizations because it's not Harry Potter and it's not woo woo. It's reprogramming your subconscious and it's communicating with your higher self. And I'll talk about this more in, in later videos. Thank you for giving me your time today. Peace.